Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE Foundation Revision video. It's 53 days to go into your GCSE Maths exam and today we're going to be looking at the topics of product of primes but also the lowest common multiple and the highest common factor. So how to find the lowest common multiple and the highest common factor by using product of primes. So in this video I'm going to go through how to write numbers as product of primes. I'm going to get you to try some yourself. I'm then going to get you to do it on your calculator so to make sure you know how to use your calculator to find the product of primes. And then what we'll do is we'll look at how to use those product of primes to find the lowest common multiple and the highest common factor. So that's the LCM, lowest common multiple and the highest common factor by using those product of primes. And then I'll give you some to try yourself as well. So feel free to pause the video at various times to be practicing this. So let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at product of primes and we're going to look at how to write numbers as a product of primes as well as how to find the lowest common multiple and highest common factor using product of primes. Now every single number, every single whole number that is greater than 1, so 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on, is either a prime number or can be written as a product of prime numbers. Now remember what that means, product means to multiply together and primes obviously is your prime numbers, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17 and so on. And it's important you know those prime numbers. So every single whole number greater than 1, so for instance 2 and above, is either a prime number or you can write as prime numbers multiplied together. So here we've got 72. Now to write 72 as a product of primes, there's a few different ways you can set this out. I like to to do it using a bit of a tree like so. So I start off with the number 72 and I think of two numbers that multiply together to give me 72. So you could choose for instance 9 times 8 or 2 times 36 and so on. I'm going to choose 2 times 36. Now 2 is prime so we circle it whereas 36 isn't prime so we're now going to carry on. So we're going to do two more branches and we're going to think of two numbers that multiply together to give us 36. So I'm thinking 3 times 12 you could do 2 times 18 or 4 times 9. I wouldn't do 1 times 36 because you've still got the 36. So what I would do is I choose any pairs of numbers that multiply together to give it apart from obviously 1 in itself. So I'm going to choose 3 times 12. Now in terms of these numbers 3 is prime so we circle it and 12 is not so we're going to carry on. So let's think of two numbers now that multiply together to give us 12. So I'm going to choose 2 times 6. 2 is prime, so we circle it, where 6 isn't, so we're going to do it over two branches. And in terms of two numbers that multiply together to give us 6, I'm going to choose 2 and 3, and they're both prime, so let's circle them. So that means if we do 2, multiply by 3, multiply by 2, multiply by 2, multiply by 3, the answer will be 72. Let's just check it. 2 times 3 is equal to 6, times 2 is equal to 12, times 2 is equal to 24, times 3 would be equal to 72. So that's it. So that means that 72 is equal to, now I'm going to write these in order, I'm going to write 2 times 2 times 2, times 3 times 3. So that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. So 72 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. So that's 72 is a product of primes, but the question said to give our answer in index form. Now remember we've looked at indices, so 72 would be equal to, we've got 2 times 2 times 2, so that's 2 cubed, and then multiply by it, and we've got 3 times 3, that's 3 squared. So that means that 72 is a product of primes in index form would be 2 cubed multiplied by 3 squared. And that's it. Okay, to give you a bit of practice now, can you write 50 as a product of primes? And can you write it as a product of primes, but also give your answer in index form? Okay, so to write 50 as a product of primes, we think of two numbers that multiply together to give us 50. I could choose 5 times 10 or 2 times 25. I'm going to choose 2 times 25. I'm going to circle the 2. In terms of 25, that's 5 times 5. So let's circle both of those because they're both prime. So it means that 50 is equal to 2 times 5 times 5. And let's just check that. 2 times 5 is equal to 10 times 5 is equal to 50. And if we want to write it in index form, we've got 2 multiplied by, and we've got 5 times 5, that's 5 squared. So that means that 50 is equal to 2 multiplied by 5 squared. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at another question now. So here we've got another question. A number m, so a certain number m, written as a product of prime numbers is 2 multiplied by 3 squared. And we're asked what m is. So whenever we've got this number m, and if we write it as a product of primes, we get 2 multiplied by 3 squared. So if we just work out what 2 multiplied by 3 squared is, that'll tell us what m is. So remember our order of operations, we've got to do our squaring first. So 3 squared is 9, so 3 times 3 is 9. So we've got 2 multiplied by 9, doing the squaring first. Now we're going to do 2 times 9, and 2 times 9 is equal to 18. So that means that the number m would be 18. And we can check that. If we start with 18 and we do, well, think of two numbers that multiply together to be 18. That's 2 times 9, or you could do 3 times 6. I'm going to circle the two, it's prime. Nine's obviously not prime because three times three is nine, so we're going to do three times three, and if we circle them, we get two times three times three, or two times three squared. So that means that we're right, the number m would be 18, and we just worked it out by doing three squared is nine, and then two times nine is equal to 18, and that's it, so just working out the product of primes. Okay, the next part then says to write the number 10m as a product of primes. Now, 10m, remember that means 10 times m, so that's 180, because 10 times 18 would be 180. So you could do a prime factor tree for 180 if you wanted to, and I'll show you that in a second, but there is a bit of a shortcut because we've got 10m. 
Now, m, we were told that m is equal to 2 multiplied by 3 squared. So m is 2 multiplied by 3 squared. And we're going to multiply that by 10. And 10 is equal to 2 times 5. Because as a product of primes, if we had 10, we would have 2 times 5. They're both primes, so let's circle them both. So 10 is 2 times 5. So that means if we take our 2 multiplied by 3 squared, and we times that by 2, and we times that by 5, that would be 10m. And then we could just write this in index form. So we've got 2 times 3 squared times 2 times 5. 2 times 2 is 2 squared. And then we've got times 3 squared. And then we've got times 5. So 10m would be 2 squared times 3 squared times 5. And that's it. Now, there was another way to do it. Remember, we said that 10m was 180. If we start off with 180, we could do 2 times 90. Circle the 2. 90. I'm going to choose 9 times 10. Uh, 9 isn't prime, so we're going to do 3 times 3. That's equal to 9. And they're both prime, so let's circle them both. And 10 is equal to 2 times 5. And then circle those as well. So that means that 180 would be 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. So that's 2 squared times 3 squared times 5. And that's what we got. And that's it. So you could have done that question either way. Okay, we're now going to look at how to use product of primes to find the lowest common multiple and the highest common factor. Now to do that, I've got two warm-up questions for you. Can you please write 92 as a product of primes? And can you do that in a list, but also in index form? And then also, our other one is, can you write 48 as a product of primes? And can you use your calculator to do that? And I'll show you how to do that if you're not sure how to do that in a moment. Okay, so write this one as a product of primes without using a calculator. Do it as a list and then also in index form. And can you use your calculator to write 48 as a product of primes? Okay, so to write 92 as a product of primes, it's even. So I'm going to do 2 multiplied by 46. 2 is prime, so let's circle it. 46, that's going to be 2 multiplied by 23. 2 is prime, so let's circle it. And actually, 23 is prime as well, so let's circle that as well. So that means that 92 would be equal to 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 23. And in index form, that would be 2 squared multiplied by 23. And that's it. Okay, next one was to write 48 as a product of primes and to use our calculator. Okay, so let's have a look at our calculators. And I've got a couple of different models here. So here in yellow, we've got the word fact. And that means prime factorization. So it means to write a number as a product of primes. So what you do is you type in 48 to begin with, and then press equals. So your calculator says 48. And then you're going to press, and I see it's in yellow, you're going to press shift, and then you're going to press that button, and then it's going to write it as a product of primes for you. And whenever you do that, it should come up with the answer of 2 to the power of 4 multiplied by 3. And that's it, your calculator's worked that out for you. If you've got a different type of calculator, if you've got this one, again, it's in the same place. So you press 48, press equals, and then press shift, and then press the same button, and then it would write it as a product of primes. So if you've got a calculator like this, you're going to type in 48, and then press equals or execute, whatever you want to call it. I call it equals, even though it's exe, execute. And then 48 appears on your calculator display. Then you're just going to press the format button, and then it comes up with a list of standard, decimal, or prime factor. So you go down to prime factor, and then you press equals or exe, and then writes it out for you, 2 to the power of 4 multiplied by 3. And that's it. Okay, so we've written those numbers as product of primes. Now let's use that information to then find the lowest common multiple and the highest common factor. Okay, so we've got two questions here, and it's to work out the highest common factor of 48 and 92, and to work out the lowest common multiple of 48 and 92. So let's write down what our product of primes were to begin with again. So we had 48 is equal to 2 to the power of 4 multiplied by 3, and we had that 92 was equal to 2 squared multiplied by 23. So we've got our numbers as product of primes. Now I actually prefer in these questions to write them out as a list. So I'm going to do 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3 for our 48. And for 92, I'm going to write 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 23. I just prefer having them in the list whenever I'm doing these highest common factors and lowest common multiples. So now what we're going to do is we're going to find the highest common factor of 48 and 92. And what we do is we draw two circles like so with the overlap. And we're going to do 48 beside one of them and 92 for the other. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a look and see what they've got in terms of the numbers and see where we can put them on this diagram. So 48 has got 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2. And 92 has some 2s as well. It's got 2 multiplied by 2. So they both have two 2s. So we can put two 2s in the middle. So that has two 2s in the 48 circle and it has two 2s in the 92 circle. So we've done all the 2s for 92, but 48 had two extra 2s. So we're going to need to put two extra 2s over there. So we've got two 2s in the middle. It's because they both have at least two 2s. And then we've put two extra 2s on the 48 side. Now 48 has got a 3. So we're now going to put a 3 over there on the 48 side. And 92 has got a 23. So we're going to put a 23 over there on the 92 side. So we put all our numbers in the Venn diagram. We can just check it. In terms of 92, it's got 2 times 2 times 23. Perfect. And in terms of 48, it's got 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. And that's what we want as well.
Now the question said to find the highest common factor. So that's what they're both divisible by, the, the largest number that they're both divisible by. So to find that, we look at the numbers in the middle, which is a two and a two, and we multiply these numbers together. So we're gonna do two, multiply by two, and that's equal to four. So the highest common factor of 48 and 92 would be four. So to find the highest common factor, you multiply the numbers in the middle. Now the lowest common multiple, that's the first number in the 48 times tables and the 92 times tables. It's going to be quite a large number if you think of the, the 48 times tables and the 92 times tables or the multiples of both of them. It's the first number that appears in both of those lists. And to find the lowest common multiple, you're going to times all of the numbers together in the Venn diagram. So you're going to do 2 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 2 times 23. So let's do that. 2 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 2 times 23. And that would be the lowest common multiple. So let's work this out. 2 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 2 times 23 on my calculator gives me an answer of 1104. So it means the lowest common multiple of 48 and 92 would be 1104. And that's it. Okay, so if you want to find the lowest common multiple or highest common factor of two numbers, what you can do is write them as a product of primes. You can draw this Venn diagram on these circles, and then you can put the numbers inside of the diagram, so the ones that they share in the middle and the extra ones on the, each of the sides. And then to find the highest common factor, you multiply the numbers in the middle, and for the lowest common multiple, you multiply all the numbers together. Okay, to give you one now to practice yourself, so can you find the highest common factor and lowest common multiple of 36 and 60? And work that out now. Okay, so we want to find the lowest common multiple and the highest common factor of 36 and 60. So let's write them as product of prime. So 36 would be, well, 2 times 18 is equal to 36. Circle the 2, it's prime. 18's not, so now let's do that. So that would be 2 times 9. 2's prime, so let's circle that. 9's not. 3 times 3 is equal to 9. They're both prime, so let's circle them. So that means that 36 would be equal to 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3. Now in terms of 60, well, that's going to be equal to, well, let's do 6 times 10. Neither of those are prime. 6 and 8 is equal to 2 times 3. They're both prime. And 10 is equal to 2 times 5. And they're both prime. So that means that 60 is equal to 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 5. Now you notice here that I haven't written these in index form just because we're about to find the lowest common multiple and highest common factor and we're going to put these into our Venn diagrams, our circles. Okay, so I've drawn our Venn diagram and we've got one for 36, one circle for 36, our circle oval, <laughs> and we've got one circle for 36 and one for 60. Okay, so so now let's look at the numbers that they share. 36 has got 2 multiplied by 2, and 60 has got 2 multiplied by 2. They've both got two twos, so we can put those twos in the middle. They've both got two twos. Now let's look at threes. 36 has got two threes, and 60 has got one three. So that means we can put one three in the middle, and we can put the extra three on the 36 side. So we've done the twos and the threes, and in terms of the five, 60 is a five, so we've put that over there. So we've put all our numbers in the Venn diagram. Fantastic. So now let's find the highest common factor. So the highest common factor, so the largest number you can divide both of these numbers by, we multiply the numbers in the middle. So we're going to do 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3. And 2 times 2 is equal to 4 times 3 is equal to 12. So the highest common factor of 36 and 60 is 12. That's the largest number that they're both divisible by. Okay, now in terms of the lowest common multiple, to find the lowest common multiple, we now just need to multiply all the numbers in the Venn diagram. So we're going to do 3 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 5. So we're going to do 3 times times 2, times 2, times 3, times 5, and that's equal to 180. That's equal to 180. So that means the lowest common multiple of 36 and 60 is 180, and that's it. And that's it. So in today's video, we've looked at how to write numbers as product of primes. We've looked at how to use your calculator to do that. We've also looked at how to find the lowest common multiple and the highest common factor using product of primes. If you've got the code miles revision card, card number 44 is the code miles revision card on product of primes. So hopefully that'll be useful for you. And I'll just remind you to find the lowest common multiple. You multiply all the numbers in the circles or the Venn diagrams. And for the highest common factor, you multiply just the numbers in the middle. So where those two circles are overlap. And that's it. So I really hope you found this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like it and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, I just want to say at this point that I'm incredibly proud of how hard you've been working throughout these videos. I know lots of people have been doing these videos every single day. So all of those videos every single day, along with your other revisions, such as your five a days, your revision in school, past papers, all of those things will be having a positive impact in terms of your confidence and hopefully I mean that you're going to get a, a great grade in the exam or the grade that you want in the exam or even better. But keep up the hard work and I'll see you tomorrow at 3 o'clock for 52 days to go into your GCC Maths exam. So thank you. Cheers. Bye.